We are in the first week of Advent and we come to our first Saturday. I was praying over this this morning and just thinking about March 25th. Such a big day in the calendar, but yet we don't really celebrate it as we ought. You think back, March 25th, what's the big deal about March 25th? Why is that such an important date? Perhaps it's the most important date in the entire calendar. Far more important, we could even say, than Christmas Day on the church calendar. Far more important, perhaps, than many of our feast days, and yet we don't celebrate it, I don't think, with the solemnity and that it deserves. Because if we go back nine months ago to March 25th, what do we celebrate on that day? We celebrate the incredible moment, the amazing moment, when God fulfilled the promise he had made to Adam and Eve. The promise he had made when our first parents had fallen. He made that promise to them as he condemned Satan and said, I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and hers. You will strike at her heel and she will crush your head. So what happened on March 25th? The angel Gabriel came to Our Lady and said those most beautiful words that we repeat literally 53 times when we pray the rosary. Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Those powerful words he spoke to her, recognizing her and acknowledging her as the one who was full of grace, recognizing and acknowledging her that she is the firstborn daughter of the Father, spouse of the Holy Spirit, and one who shall be, and momentarily, the mother of God, destined from all of eternity, created for this purpose, so loved by the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That as the angel addresses her, he doesn't even speak her name, he addresses her as one who is full of all the graces of God, acknowledging her immaculate conception, acknowledging that God has blessed her with every grace into heaven and above. Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. It's interesting, he says, the Lord is with you before she conceives our Lord because the Holy Spirit was with her from the moment of conception. Never was she without the intimate union between her soul and that of this Holy Spirit himself. St. Maximilian Colby said that she was so in love with the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit so in love with her, that he called her the quasi-incarnation of the Holy Spirit. It was as if the Holy Spirit was incarnate in her. In other words, there were two persons, the second, per, third person of the Blessed Trinity and the person of the Blessed Virgin Mary bound by a bond of love, such a strong bond that the Holy Spirit would never, ever be parted from her. How beautiful. Two persons bound by love. The Lord was truly with her from the moment of conception. And the angel reveals to her that she was chosen to be the mother of God. He says, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God, for you shall conceive in your womb and bear a son. And he goes on to ask how this is going to be, because she's a virgin. She knows the scriptures. She knows Isaiah chapter 7. She knows that the Messiah must be born of a virgin. So it's not a question of, of this is impossible. How can that, how that's going to happen? It's the question of, Okay, how is it going to happen? <laughs> it's more of the technical question. The power of the Most High will come upon you. The Holy Spirit shall overshadow you. And the one to be born shall be called the Son of God. And it's at this moment where one woman changes history. With a simple phrase, but with a powerful phrase. Simple words, but powerful words. Words that gave God permission to do something he had never done before. Our Lady simply says those powerful words that changes the world forever. Because of her small little phrase, the world would never be the same. And everything God had planned within the Old Testament would begin its fulfillment. 
those powerful, beautiful words that became part of the church's regular daily prayers three times a day. Bells would ring and we would repeat her words because they're so important. Thanks to the Franciscans, we do that. But anyway, it's just important that we do it. Three times a day, we stop. Bells would ring. 6 a.m., 12 noon, and 6 p.m. To recall the Angelus. Those beautiful words of Our Lady when she said, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done unto me according to thy word. No more powerful words were ever spoken by a human person. Because it was those powerful words that gave God permission to become man. She gave God permission to become man. She accepted the word. She received the word. She conceived the word. God became man in her womb. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. We pray the Angelus three times a day and we repeat those words. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. If we're standing, we genuflect or we bow at that moment because it's such a profound moment. Such a profound moment in history that God, the second person of the most blessed Trinity, would take up residence in the womb of Our Lady. Not residence like he did in the Ark of the Covenant when the... God was present there among the ark, not present in the way that he was in Israel when he marched before Israel, or when he appeared as a pillar of fire or a pillar of cloud to lead them to the desert, not like that. Never before had God God done something like this, an eternal choice on the part of God to become one of us. He did not just dwell among us in his womb, he dwelt among us as one of us. In her womb, as one of us, taking a full human nature, human soul, the human body, human intellect, human will. He united humanity to himself, to his person. In her womb, the hypostatic union takes place in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. As the Holy Spirit forms his human nature, sent by the Father, this greatest gift to humanity. God himself, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. The face that Moses was not allowed to look upon takes shape in the womb of the Virgin Mary. The mighty hands of God that held back the Red Sea are formed in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary with human hands. This quiet child in the womb of Our Lady It's so beautiful that God could have chosen any possible way to come into our world. He could have created a human nature out of dirt, like he did with Adam. But no. In his love for us, he enters our world as one of us, like the rest of us, through a mother. We think of these nine months since March 25th, since that powerful day when Our Lady said yes, and God entered our world so quietly, so humbly, so gently. She says her yes, and God is conceived in her womb. She spoke the word, and the word became flesh. In Latin, we use the phrase fiat mihi, fiat mihi. Let it be done unto me. It's interesting. She's offered to be the mother of God and she says, I am the handmaid of the Lord. She has such humility. And truly she becomes the greatest servant of God. Any one of you mothers know that what a mother is mostly is the servant. (laughs) You serve that child day in and day out. And even after they leave the house, you're still doing their laundry while they're in college. And then praying for them and caring for them, even from the long, long distances, even throughout this side of the world, you're still serving with your love. Our Lady, so beautifully, these nine months of her pregnancy, these nine months as God dwells within her, what was that moment of his first kick like? The first time he stirred in the womb. How beautiful to think about what you mothers deal with and go through through pregnancy. The joy you have as a child grows within you 
And here, the Blessed Mother experiences that. And the child within her womb is the creator of the heavens and the earth, the maker of all things. God so loved the world, he sent his only begotten Son to save us as one of us. I think of oftentimes how in history, prior to the incarnation, God was never truly loved by one of his creatures. Never really loved as much as he deserved. Even afterwards, as much as we have been good people and even the greatest of saints have tried so much to love God, but they never loved him truly perfectly because there's always that touch of sin in us, never to the perfection. Here, starting on the March 25th, when he became man, God was finally loved by one of his creatures with a mother's love, with the perfection of a mother's love selflessly. No one has ever loved him as she had before even anyone knew that he was in the world. She was loving him. Before even Joseph or Anna or Joachim knew, God was being loved by his creature in the silence and in the quiet with the mother's love. So today as we make these next last three weeks in our preparation for Christmas to contemplate our Lord in the womb to contemplate Our Lady pregnant with him, the beauty of his silence and the beauty of her love, the beauty of this moment of God dwelling among us as one of us, in one of us, about to be born among us. Behold us with human eyes. Touch us with human hands. Speak to us with a human voice. Love us with the human heart, embrace us with human arms. The gentle touch of God expressed through a full humanity given to him by Our Lady. Thank you, Blessed Mother, for your yes that changed the world. May God bless you and Merry Christmas.